everyone this is my mom hi super excited to have her on the podcast with us today it is just you and i yes i don't have my my co-pilot here no but it's okay because it's fine we've got this Mm -hmm. we're good sure i just said it's like a normal conversation without telling each other to fuck off essentially is that sorry that was we we don't do that we are we are more sisters (laughs) than anything yes um Before we do get started, Mom, I do have to tell you a story about last Friday night. Why? What? Um, we hit the boulevard. Yes. Okay. And then we started streaking in the park and went skinny dipping. What? Yeah, I didn't tell you. I think we might have broke the law. Where? Oh, the chandelier was on the floor. What are you talking about? Last Friday night. Where was I? And you won't believe it. I ripped my favorite party dress. Ripped it. I don't know where you were last Friday night. The warrant's out for my rest. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. And I really need a ginger ale. What? You're so full of shit. Pictures ended up online. I'm screwed. Have you not seen them? No. No. Because it was a blackout blur. I don't believe you. I really wanted to do that. Joey the Helper. (laughs) You're full full of shit. My mom is super gullible and naive, hence where I get it from, so I just had to do this. I see a yeah. TikTok on it. Mom, it was, it's lyrics from Last Friday Night from Katy Perry. You know, the singer Katy Perry. Okay. And people do pranks yes, on other yes, people, and I'm yes. like, how perfect would this be? All right, okay. If yeah. I did this with my mother. Yes, I get it now. Were you a little, were you? I was just, you know, kind of, you know, I'm, I'm losing some of my memories, and... <laughs> I just can't remember anything like what that. What was so. last Friday? I don't even know uh, what last Friday I don't even know was. what I did last Friday, so. so funny. <laughs> Welcome, Mama. I'm super excited to have you Thank you for having me. On. Yeah. I think it will be very beneficial to kind of share your perspective and, you know, your insight on this journey that we're in now. Yes. Um, so let's dive right into it. Um, the night we left, we lost our precious little one. Um, what were the circumstances? I know you and I weren't together the night we lost her. Um, we were, what was going on? I was actually, it was, I was supposed to watch Gwenny that day and, uh, it turned out that Jeff, um, had decided he was going to take him to, uh, Lori's place mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so but uh, I texted like I always do mm-hmm. um, how's Gwenny doing send me a picture yeah and um, I wasn't getting any answer and that was from me right yeah, yeah you were it was, was nighttime te- and yeah. then you were at dinner and you were messaging me quite like well, you yes, always do like yes, you said and, yeah and, and then I just I just thought okay what's going on and so I came in the house and I called your number mm-hmm. and um, Jeff answered the phone and um he was crying and no you answered the phone sorry and you said see i don't okay so like hold i don't remember any of this yeah you you answered the phone and and you said mom i can't talk right now you were upset and so i i kept saying what's going on where's you know what's going on where's gwenny and um jeff got on the phone and uh, he said uh he was crying and he said minnie you got to get to the hospital and I said, what is going on? Why? And he said, it's Gwenny. There, you have to get to the hospital. And mm-hmm. as we were, as I was talking to him, I heard Gwenny mm-hmm. shriek, her, her shriek. shriek of laughter. Gwendolyn so had was, a very loud shriek. Yes, when she was excited. And I, yeah. thought, and I thought at that moment, I thought, well, okay, she's okay because I can hear her. I, I just heard her, you know. And then I thought, well, no, that's not right. She's in the ambulance and Mm -hmm. they're driving with Tamara's dad to the hospital Mm -hmm. and then I just lost it Mm -hmm. I uh, screamed her name over and over and Gord I said we got to go to the hospital something's wrong with Gwen and Mm -hmm. and uh but you you know how they are with them because she'd been taken to the hospital quite a bit so yeah and I think did you like I know for myself I was under the impression that you know, we were going to be admitted. Things were going to be okay. Um, what were what was your impression when you walked in that night to the no, hospital? No, I, I kind of figured um, something more was up than just... Why was that? Just um, when I heard her... Um, when you had that intuition of I like had I, I have a... Sometimes I have a sixth sense of things. And a uh, lot of people do. And, you know, I think, yeah. you know, and, and it sounds witchy, but it's really not. You know, you can't create energy nor destroy it. 
So when you really open up those energy floodgates. Yeah, I knew something. I, I knew it, was, it wasn't it was going to be just, okay. uh, you know, a, a, a hospital stay for Gwenny. Okay. Um, so Did I, you know this coming into the hospital? I was pretty um, yeah. upset and, and, yeah, you know, begging God, please. And um, so I, I was the first one to arrive. Were you really? See, I don't remember that. Mm-hmm. I don't. I think when I walked in, they took you right to the room. When they put me in the room, were you in the room? Yes. The room, the god awful room. Yes, I was in the room. Um, yeah. I had uh, said to the, the uh, clerk at the desk, I said, Is my granddaughter, is my granddaughter here? Is she alive? You know, and um, she said, You can't, I can't tell you that. Yeah, I and don't you know. know, when you know that, it's just like. Um, so we just, uh, I waited for you guys to show up and then, um, uh, we waited a long time in that room. How, like what felt like forever? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it did. Um, was and, there any commotion around you? Did you um, hear anything? Just when the doctors came, um, to there, see you was, when I wasn't there. No, no, they didn't come to see me Okay. when you came and, and, uh, they came then and, um, get closer. Um, yeah, and then there was a lot of commotion and every, you know, your dad was in the room and um, I don't know if Lori and Rick were in the room yet. I don't think so. They weren't there yet because I called them and I said, you have to come now. Yeah. And um, so it was just Jeff and you and myself and your dad. Wow, see, I don't remember any of that. Yeah, and um, they they came in and... Um, the doctors said that they had been able to start when he's hard again. Weren't able to? Were. See, oh my goodness, this is like... But because of the lack of oxygen um, for more than two hours, she it had... It was two hours. She had no... Um, Brain activity? No, no. So they, they had uh, felt it, you know, best to um, just kind of let her go. Um, which they did, and she passed immediately. Her heart stopped. There, there was no brain activity, so her little heart stopped beating. And I know, I know. I, I don't remember any of that. You, um, that was, um, you know, and and when we had Buzz Collins on previously, he said it was a really big blur too. And I do remember at the point of showing up to the hospital and just saying. Nothing matters. And I remember when they when we were trying to revive her that night, um, I just kept running around like a fucking fool and like falling down and just thinking to myself, nothing matters in this life except for one's health and just being well. Mm-hmm. And I just kept saying, please, whoever the fuck is out there, please save her. Um... So, like, to hear, I guess that's where, like, shock comes in yeah. and protects you. Because I, oh, <laughs> thanks, buddy. <laughs> Toilet roll, we're classy here. Um, I think that's where shock, like, comes in. And I don't remember them saying that she was able to start her heart. So they were? Yeah. Um, and um, you... Uh, like you said, we're in shock. And um, when they said that because of the brain activity not being there... Um, they really didn't... There was nothing. They could um, do. So they just felt it, you know, it would be better for to, to let her go. And you, you know, you kind of agreed with that. And then um, they left and you fell to the floor. And um, I tried to go around and help you, but you... You were just like, no, don't touch me. Yeah. Which is, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I remember um, that. And then uh, we were allowed to uh, go and see her in the room she was in. and This is something that I have a hard time with because I felt, and I'll, I say it in therapy and I've done it in EMDR. When Gwen came into this world, she was hooked up to a lot of things, as you know, mm-hmm. including... Uh, 
life support and the breathing tube. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then when Gwendolyn passed, they had intubated her again with the breathing tube, and they weren't under the table, unable to take it out um, for certain reasons. And I just, I, I still struggle with this today that I felt like I didn't stay there long enough with her. I felt like when I went in there to say goodbye or to hold her, it was very quick. It was very brief. Like it was almost like I didn't, I didn't want to be in there. I think you were, I think you were just so defeated in, in, uh, shock. Um, it, we all just, uh, just, you know, got in the truck and, and went back to the house, like your, your house. So we, but you did like, um, you, you laid with Gwenny. Yeah. And I don't um, remember. Yeah, you did. How would how was it when you how, what did you think initially like initially when you showed up to the hospital and and you knew it wasn't gonna be okay what what was your brain saying like was it saying anything no was it shutting off as well not really I think it was just okay we gotta we gotta get through this um uh, and how do you get through this like I I I know and I know Buzz said too like. It was like initially like nothing else matters. Um, you kind of interrupt when they're talking. Like I remember interrupting the paramedic being like, you know, we've, we did everything and this is what happens when brain activity, this, this, and I go just stop. Like I, I, I know. know I work with traumatic brain injuries. I know what happens. Exactly. Did you feel like that? Did um, you feel shut off? It was very, um, lonely. Lonely. Uh, I would say, um waiting you know in in that room um for you guys it, it, i was constantly going out and okay. W- okay where's where's the ambulance like where's my granddaughter and um and then you guys showed up and um um yeah mm. just went from there uh to survival mode yeah. very fast quickly right yeah. and um can you talk about what happened, like what led, led, like what was happening after that circumstances? You know, I know it, it was very busy for a few days and the commotion of things, but I don't really remember. I don't remember me, so I don't really remember how you were feeling in those moments. We were, we were. Uh, I was uh, more or less outside. Um, you were in the bedroom. Um, Outside entertaining people? Yes. Because I know it was very, very busy at, at it, it one point. It was very busy. Uh, people were coming, staying. Um, you were, you and Jeff at one point had been, were, bit, were in the bed and, and everybody was coming in to see you. you okay. You were in your safe space, which has always, you yeah. know, been... Um, My bed. Your bed. <laughs> I know. Um, and um, so basically I was, you know, I was outside and partying with uh, the rest of them and when you say partying what do you mean by like I wouldn't say partying but like drinking 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 away those emotions those feelings exactly and I and I really feel like a lot of people do that when you know it, it is uh, it is somewhat of a, a coping mechanism a, yeah I remember the one day you know I think maybe it was day two or day three I was I was drunk by 10 in the morning I know and I'm like how is this acceptable but it, it just it didn't matter at that I moment. think anything is is acceptable I couldn't handle it at any you know uh, uh, those circumstances I couldn't handle the pain I know I know and it was awful it was it was horrible and then um when things uh slowed down yep um I believe we had got Gwenny back and we were Mm-hmm. Uh, going to wake her, um, but I, but I just I and just... and for those who don't know, I, we decided to have an open casket for uh, more of an intimate wake. So uh, we had an intimate wake for just very close family Fair. members, yeah. very very close friends that first time, and then we ended up having two weeks following with a closed casket right. because it was very traumatic. It was very. It was very... Very much. traumatic seeing a two-year-old and it, it, in it, that it, situation. Yeah. And... Uh, what was going through your mind then? Um, like, at the funeral home and, and you know, oh. having to be strong, not only for yourself, but for me too. Well, yeah. I mean, it... it, 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 it I, I've been to a lot of 
a lot of funerals. Yeah. I haven't lost uh, a lot. I actually had to be up there. Um, you know, I have, but not yeah. that. But um, I guess you, uh, I just needed to be strong. Um, I needed to be strong for you. And yeah. um, and your dad was, was there and uh, he wasn't feeling very well. He was sick. Um, yeah. So I just, I just needed to. You kind of your role kicks in, right? Like yeah, your, <clears throat> yeah. Like your your uh, your instinct of a your mother, mama, mama stink, role. kind of kind of kicked in. Exactly. Um, with grieving, um, which I didn't know until I went to a counselor. When did you decide to seek out a counselor? Um, I think when I I got really bad. Um, with the drinking and um, what do you mean by that I, like how bad was it getting? well it was getting so bad that I was doing it you know every day waking up drinking and going to bed smoking pot and uh, yeah anything to kind of numb that pain yeah and I had my um, medical drugs as well um, and I guess my doctor just you know said to me and she kind of wakened me up because she said she'd, she could appreciate the way I was feeling, yeah. but I, but she thought that there were better ways that I could to cope, cope with my emotions. And so then I, I sought out a counselor and, um, and in doing that, I guess I, um, uh, that was the initial step for me mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. starting to really grieve, um, allowing those allowing, flat gates to exactly, come down exactly. right because when and that's the thing you know and and I often say this to a lot of people because I too was drinking very heavily um I I wasn't addressing those emotions no in a healthy way but as they do they appear you know the yeah. next morning you wake up yeah. And they and, and or in a bad dream mm. or when you're driving your car, mm. you know they're there. Yes, um, and they're going to ignite. And the only way you know through it, or the only way you know coming overcoming it is is through to it. Live through it, and that's the hard reality because yeah. we don't want to feel tough emotions. They're hard to feel. No, we don't. It's easier to slam back a pack of beer yeah. or take some shots of vodka mm. and kind of cope that way until it's not just okay. numb your brain and that's just it and mm-hmm. I remember I was becoming very resentful with you too because I, I you know I I would I would almost get mad at you when you would show me emotion you know I would be like is it going to be okay mom and you're like yes but then you'd start crying and I was like don't why are you crying it's my baby. Yeah. That's my baby. I'm your baby. I need you right now. I need you to be the stronger one of this. Mm. That's my child. Why are you crying? Yeah. And it breaks my heart to think that I did that now because your therapist said to you, you're not only grieving the loss of your grandchild, but you're also grieving your daughter. Yes. Yes. And that's um, something um, that was like a shock to me but um it made sense and in, into the way that I was grieving yeah um, and uh yeah um grandparents do um grieve very deeply and uh um it's very hard for them to um uh like like hold it in for Gwenny mm-hmm. but so I can be there for you you know because because basically uh, we go through uh, the two grievances. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and you, you mourn. The, my my granddaughter and then my daughter. Yeah. Um, yeah, so And it's... you were there from the very beginning because for the first, like, six months, you were essentially the other caregiver. I was the partner. You know, you were yeah. with me in hospital. Mm-hmm. You, um, when I couldn't be there, you were there. Um, you would converse with the medical staff. You know, when we were up in Toronto, you stayed with me. Yeah. Um, we did it all. Yeah. And we fought very hard I know. Um, for her t- to Many be times. okay. Mm-hmm. So you essentially also grieved uh, the loss of a child too. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. It, it was very painful and it still uh, can be painful. But I, bl- I believe what um, happened was... Um, 
um, once once I uh, I was able to um, I, I guess what I did was I I actually um, let Quenny pass and I what do you mean by that like let her pass let her go I, I let her like go. accept it I accepted it that mm-hmm. she was gone um, because I think people fear that if they accept they're gone then they're gonna lose that that part yeah. of loving that person but yeah it's it really isn't like that it's it's um being able to um continue on and mm-hmm. um and um still love her uh dearly um and think about her every day I do and and sometimes I cry but most times now I remember her uh, howling at the moon, uh, I can look at her pictures and I can laugh. And you remember that moment, right? You're, you're I remember you're that, back moment. In that moment. And exactly, mm-hmm. and and it's not that I let go of her. Um, I just I accepted that yeah. she had left us. Yeah. Um, I know you're religious. Mm. You're a religious person. You know you. I remember growing up, going to Sunday school, and was baptized. And you know, you always taught me that. Uh, you felt there was, um, you know, we are God's children. Yes. Um, I remember you were very angry for a long time with your religion and questioning. I was very. Your religion. I, um, I remember you and I in Gwenny's room. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, I, I think she was just standing there. We were talking and, um. Who was standing there? Gwenny in the, in the crib and. And you said, um, Mom, God's not going to take her now, is he? And I looked at you and I said, no, God's not going to take her now. Yeah, because for so long we were so scared because there were times. In saying that, I believe that. I believe that wholeheartedly that um, he wouldn't. So, yeah, I was very angry. Yeah, because um, afterwards... Um, yeah, you know, um, he had a chance to take her right when she was, after she was born. She was so sick. She was so sick. And that's why, you know, it really comes back to, I really believe people are here for a reason, a season and a lifetime. Mm -hmm. And she was here for a reason. And I said this in therapy today too. That, you know, when you say, why didn't he just take her from the start? Why did she have to battle so many hardships and fight? And why did we fight so hard for her? Only for her to go in such a traumatic way, this innocent little child. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do remember, you know, and I was so mad. And, and with grief and something like that, you don't really know how how to be. And you don't know who to be mad at. Um, but I know for you, you were very angry with, with him, with mm. God or who say. When did you find that you were able to accept and forgive? God? Yeah. Uh, or and in general, when were you able to, when did you find that? Because um, I think that's something that I'm still struggling with. You are, yes. Um, I guess it came with... Um, the pain, uh, having so much pain, yeah, um, and really not being there, you know, as much as I wanted to be for you. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I had to be um, the strong one in, in circumstances yeah. for you. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I knew that I, I had to, I had to do something. Yeah. To to make me better. Did you find that it helped you, like the, you know, finally not saying goodbye but accepting and allowing yeah. for closure? Mm-hmm. When I did that, I started forgiving. Yeah. Um, I started praying again. Yeah. And um, it helped me, um, because to hang on, you know, to something that yeah. we know, you know, Gwenny is not going to come back no I think that's the hardest thing is like not coming back exactly but the thing about it is Gwenny will always be here I know she is I think for a long time 
it took me to realize like I am Gwen. What you are me. And um mm-hmm. they always say that, you know, people never die unless they are forgotten. Right. And you know, I think it's really important for people that have lost that you never are gonna re- you're never gonna forget or not remember your loved ones. No. Um how beautiful is that? Because we've learned that grief is just all the love in the world and I say this so many times I know. that love came first yeah. and how beautiful is that? And I think, you know, I would do it all again just to have that chance to love her so fiercely because she loved so God. fiercely. She did. Yes. Um, you know, and I know for myself, I'm still having a really hard time accepting the fact that she's not coming back. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of that is we still don't have a, definitive answer as to why she got in the first place because she was thriving because she was just flourishing in this beautiful little soul but I know I did find a little bit of closure when I talked to genetics not too long ago and I just said reopening this Pandora box of what ifs or what coulds or now we're just trying to find something that we may never have an answer for exactly is not allowing me to really heal or if healing's the word, but grow from this, it's just kind of holding me stagnant in this position. And I think even if I knew exactly what really was wrong or what happened, it still You'd be wouldn't, it. It, mm. it still wouldn't. Yeah. I would still, you know, doubt that exactly. I would still have a hard time. You know, I wouldn't really accept it because it's a death that shouldn't have happened. No. You know, no. and I don't think you could ever truly accept, but, you know, recognize that she's not coming back. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's really powerful. But that's what, what helped me heal. Yeah. Um, yeah. So how do you find, you know, we are coming up <clears throat> on two years and less than a month. And for me, I know I'm more in complex grief now because not, I'm not in a shock anymore i'm right i'm more this is real this mm-hmm. is happening um and i find it's very hard because we're going to now miss her more than we had her in her mortal age soon right. after 27 yeah. months how are you finding your grief now um, and those you know how those bad days and- I, I guess it i guess my my um my feelings um work around how you are feeling you know <laughs> and how am i mom <laughs> <laughs> some days <laughs> um that's pretty well um i uh you know spring is is the the month of new birth new growth yes. but it also can be so tragic um in lives that are lost uh as well you know it's just a um so I, I think what what's happened, I've I've been thinking about Gwenny a lot a lot more. It's almost like your soul knows. I've got your your baby pictures up more. Yeah. Try yeah. Um why is that? I, I don't know. I just you know, I uh I just feel more comfortable with them on the fridge and seeing you. Really? And, yeah. Aww. My little Alfie. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and that helps me. And, uh, it's not that I don't cry because I do cry, but then I have good support as well. Um, who with, is your with support? Gord. Gord. Gord's he, my stepdaddy. Yes. <laughs> as, yeah. Um, the last words that, uh, Gwen said when, um, she was, we were watching her, um, I said, say goodbye to Papa. And, uh, it was Papa Gord. Uh, and she she said, "Pa, pa." <laughs> she did. It's last that we've seen her, but you know, it's so many things she could have been. And, I know, and on the verge. And of I being. guess, yeah, I guess that's really what hurts is the grieving part. Is yeah, and, and we mourn we, for her exactly for what we wanted her to go through. Yeah, and she can You know, it's 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 our loss. Because we can never give her those things. Do you um, find that, like, not the word isn't jealous, but 
do you find, you know, you compare yourself to other grandparents or why can't I, you know, why was it me? Why can't I have that with her still? Um, I think probably at the first it was like that, you yeah. know, or, um, um, I think I would shy away from, um, having, you know, conversations, yeah. uh, with them. Um, but now it's, it's, uh, you know, like I said, it's, it's, it's life and, and good for them, you know, that they have one. Yeah. And, um, and good, like, you know, I think it, it's, it's really important, you know, for people to wealth is good is, you know, is a good life. That is the true, that is the true, I'm torn, I'm trying to say, sorry, grief brain. It's a real thing. Yeah. <laughs> but that is, you know, the true heart and soul yeah. to a good life is yeah. having good health. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, really being able to embrace that. Mm-hmm. Right? Because I feel like as a society, we're just so go, go, go. And focusing on what's next or, you know, that the money that can't afford the bill and or you, with the tragedy that we're facing now with um, inflation and just all these horrible circumstances. But really, when it comes down to it, like life is so precious and it can be gone in just an, in, in seconds. And that's what I'm still trying to wrap my head around is like my perspective on life has changed so immensely Mm. and like recognizing choosing my heart, you know, right. And, and, and I'm really like coming to terms with just how precious life is because death is, is a definite and it can happen to anybody whenever um, it will happen and it will happen. I mean, yeah, it's, it's definite. Right. So Mm -hmm. just, I guess really trying to understand that too. Like, holy shit. We just can't prepare ourselves. Uh, We try to. um, But But even if you do prepare yourself, I've learned that it doesn't help. It doesn't. (laughs) But how do you prepare? You're going to feel those emotions anyways. You're going to be faced with a difficult circumstance regardless. I think being able to be open to it is definitely helping. Yeah. Right? Worrying about it all the time is is not. No, no. Uh, not a good thing. Yeah. Are you making a point to me? <laughs> trying. <laughs> trying to uncondition my conditioned brain to think the absolute worst in everything. Yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> Jesus. Have, did you ever see, like, it's isn't it crazy to think, like, how I remember sitting out in the yard with you shortly after Gwen passed and just looking out in the yard in such a daze. And I just said, you know, she should be here. She should be running around in the yard with June. I remember. And Cash. And... To see where we're at now, do you ever like think we never get think, here? Here we are at a podcast in her name. Yeah, talking about this. Um, no, uh, uh, you know I didn't. It's so hard to see those things when you're in the thick of it. Yeah, you just. Uh, I think you you just uh, struggle to take one day at a time. Um, I because, still do that. Mm-hmm. Because you know, at that time we go to sleep and still wake up feeling such raw pain. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. That, uh, and, and just, you know, wondering how, you know, when, when am I going to, you know, stop hurting so bad? And, um, I think I know for yeah. like, and you might be like this too. I might get that from you, but allowing myself to be vulnerable. I, I've always been so resilient, but being able to, you know, allow yourself to be vulnerable is such a hard thing. And I, and I know a lot of people find this as well. You know, it's one thing to put on a brave face, but to put on one where you're not brave and you're not okay. And you're, you're openly admitting, admitting it when someone asks you, how are you today? And no, actually, you know, I'm not okay. Mm -hmm. Um, that, you know, that, that's a game changer as well. I think, you know, allowing yourself time and compassion is another thing mm-hmm. that I haven't been good with. No, but you're, you know, you're learning. Learning is an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You were always so passionate, even as a child. So, I mean, it's, uh, you're still so very, like, why? Every 
there's always questions. I always with wanted you. to be the fixer. Yeah, there's always questions with you. Why does this happen? Or yeah, you know, why does that happen? And is this going to happen? Or you know, always wanting clarification that everything's going to be okay. And I'm and now I'm more like that than ever. Mm-hmm. And I think you know, I, in therapy today, I talked about like needing to change my perspective on, you know seeing the reasons as to why it would happen more so than not happening or being excited about what is in store for the future instead of dreading what may not be. Exactly. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Shit, that was deep. That was deep. That was very deep, Mom. That I was deep. That's... So you said, like, stepdad's a big support. Yes. What else has been supports for you? Mm. I know you were always a writer, and I think that's where I've got my passion, you know. Yeah. Being my passion um, with um, following your suit and, and, and journaling and and um, writing my emotions down and, and finding some healing in that sense. Yes, yes, because what, what you can't say orally, you can certainly... Oh, express it in other ways. With a, with a pen. In healthy ways. In <laughs> healthy ways, yes. Um um, there's also a site on Facebook that I've joined. I joined it a while ago, and it was for grieving um, anybody uh, that lost uh, their baby or it was grandparents. And yeah. So I would, um, I, I, you know, they they post something and I'd yeah. I'd answer back and this is what I what I did and um, and it's helped me. It's kind of nice to know that you're not alone and being in a community exactly. that is so accepting exactly. of something so tragic. That's right. And this is what I say to everybody. And, you know, I have a lot of people that reach out to me and they're like, you know, we, we've ref- not referred, but told somebody about you and, mm-hmm. and I think they're going to reach out. And, and you know, I, I always say to them, like, I never apologize because it's, 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 so cliche, I find. And, and it's an easy thing. So I'm not con- like saying don't say that. But it's more or less, life is really fucking hard. It's not fair. Um, we are now part of a group that nobody wants to be a part of. No. But is one of the strongest out there. And yeah. it is. Yeah. You know, it really is. Like, yeah. I always say it's that It's one too. of the biggest ones. Community of mothers who have lost have got me through more than... Mm-hmm. anybody could because they know they understand yes they can they can sit with it and really get that mm-hmm. and that's good um th- that support is there so um, i mean like what would you say to a grieving grandparent if they were to reach out to you well my um what i usually do is is uh, acknowledge um yeah you know um you know, i i have been there. I feel your pain. And I also give some advice, um, on how to maybe, um, act that pain out such as, uh, maybe you want to beat a wall. When you tell angry, me that often, just beat your wall, get a, get a broom, beat a wall. That's your anger. And that, that's good. Get your anger out and then let the grief in, let it hit you. Let you it know, sit with you for a bit. Scream. Yeah. Cry. Yeah. And then sit back and just breathe. Um, because you've acknowledged the grief and now you're going to let it go. Just for that time being. Because it's going to hit you again. But each time it's going to get easier. The shell to um, pass, right? And shall pass. Exactly. And uh, it's uh, one of the best ways it helped me. Um so I can only go on the way I handled yeah. it. Um, but I think that's very transparent when you say, you know, feel it. Really feel it because so many people are so scared to feel it because it's exactly. a horrible feeling. It is awful. It, it's they, horrible. They will do anything to not feel it. Yeah. Because it is horrible. Mm-hmm. It's, it's terrible. It's easier to feel anger. Feel it's easy to feel, feel rejection. It's mm-hmm. easier to feel all, you know, those emotions Get mad. compared Just to... stay mad. The sad ones. Exactly. If you get if you get mad at, and you stay mad, then you never, um, you're never able to um, go forward. And yeah, I, I find it's very, um, you know, and I don't know for you, but I know when um, I first met with my grief counselor and we talked about, you know, I was like, well, I'm gonna feel this, 
and I'm gonna then I'm gonna feel anger and then I'm gonna feel deep sorrow and then I'm gonna feel you know a little bit of whatever in between and then I'll I'll have acceptance and she's like I hate to <laughs> be the breaker of bad news but that's bullshit. Yes. Um, first of all, for everyone, um, if you don't know, the five stages of grief are um, not true. <laughs> um, they're true in the sense that they weren't done on a study of people grieving a death. They were done on people in hospice care who were dying. Yes. So, you know, they went in and they talked to people about what they're feeling um, and how they went about accepting their death. And it had kind of... A common narrative where people were very angry about this news and then remorse and sadness and then you know they kind of learned and leaned into denial and then got into more of the acceptance of what was happening to them so that study was on again hospice people that mm-hmm. were dying and mm-hmm. not somebody who is grieving for a loss of somebody Um, so those were bullshit and I think it's really important to, you know, uh, to reflect on what you said about it's not, it will come and it will go and it will come again, but it will go again and Mm -hmm. this will pass. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't always stay here. We were here and then we're here for a bit, but we're also here again. Mm Mm-hmm. I, I can go out now and I can talk about her yeah. without crying mm-hmm. to somebody, you know, like, um, and, uh, and that's good. I can walk by girls clothes. Yeah. Clothes. I found that was a real big trigger because we love shopping for Gwendolyn. Yes. And of course, um, so that, that again is a step forward. And it's those little things that, you know, people don't appreciate, right? Mm. Shopping for things, reading a child, a storybook, cuddling up after a long day. Those little things I find I miss the most. Yes. Um, it's part of your daily routine. And yes. I think losing a child is one of the hardest because it is a part of your daily it routine. Is the various. You wake up and you devote your whole day to this child mm-hmm. or around this child. Mm-hmm. And it was the same for you too. You had a very unique relationship with Gwendolyn where you were a lot of the time the other caregiver. Yes. Which mm. a lot of parent grandparents are too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Before we wrap this up, I've got to ask if you could share one of your favorite memories of our dear, dear Gwendolyn. <laughs> I know there's many of them. And it's so funny. You just made a look. I always say this. My mom reminds me so much of Gwendolyn because of your tiny little face. Mm-hmm. Um, I have mm-hmm. my dad's big head, so I didn't get that from you. <laughs> Thanks, father. Uh, yeah, you, um, she got she got his ears too. Oh, uh, yeah, noted. <laughs> Thanks, mom. Gwen got that too. So no, mom, mom, she did. Oh, okay. This ear, yeah, that this stuck ear, out. Guys, is a fourth generation ear. Stick, okay, stuck out. My grandfather had it. My dad has it. I have it. Gwendolyn had it too. Shut up, Joey. Anyways, <laughs> I would love to. I would love to hear like uh, one of your most favorite memories of Gwendolyn, or if there's there were so or... many favorite memories yeah. of Gwenny. Um, rocking her, um, I try, <laughs> I'd try and lay her down, and she'd wake up, na 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 na, cry. Okay, up you come again, and and you were such like oh weak with that. I was. I'd be like, Mom, but then you know what? Her. I just did it anyway. I don't care. I just did it because it was, it felt At Those moments, good. right? You really And I remember moments. those moments and they were nice. Gwenny had quite the face <laughs> at times. So expressive. And I remember um, she'd be sitting there um, in her chair at the table and I'd be sitting, well, I'll say I was sitting over here because you have to see the face. But, and I'd be talking to her and she'd just, she'd go like this. Just the side of her eyes. <laughs> just look at me. And I'm thinking, you little bugger, you. How can you do that? Like, how would she know to do that? Rolling her eyes? No, she just... <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. What was she doing? Though? Like, why would she do she that? Was ta- I was talking to her. And she was kind of like... Just being sassy. And she was be- Well, that's what I mean. She was rolling her yeah. eyes over, like being sassy no, with you. Just... <laughs> I don't know where she got it. I really don't. Oh. So I don't think it was ever on one of her TV shows that she watched. <laughs> she was so witty. Uh, I think one of my favorite memories to do with you as well is 
Um, my mom says shit a lot. And that was Gwendolyn's first swear word and only swear word she learned. And I remember for a while uh, she was saying shit. And I think, you know, it's so funny at first with every parent when they first learn a swear word because it is pure innocence and they don't really know the significance behind it. And it's kind of a when and where kind of thing. And then one day I heard you drop something in the basement and you said shit. And I I said, oh, shit. And Gwendolyn would always go, oh, shit. Oh, Oh, shit, shit. Nana. Oh, shit. But I think the relationship that you two had was she was so catty with you at times. Wasn't she, though? (laughs) She was. Yes, she was. You two had a very special bond. I did. I love her very very much. I'm forever thankful for that. And she adored you. I adored her. Just like I adore her mother. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks. Ditto, Mom. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for tuning thank you. in. And uh, this is exciting. This was yeah. good. That was, that was healing in a sense. So good. Thank you. I hope it helped. I hope it was healing for you, too, to talk a little bit about your, oh. sh- your experience on yeah. it as well. Yeah. Okay. Of course. Love you. Bye, guys. Don't forget, guys, um, to like and subscribe to our channel. We appreciate it so, so much.